Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking all about cardiogenic shock. So, let's get into it. So, cardiogenic shock is the inability of the heart to maintain cardiac output necessary to meet the body's needs. So, the way this happens, first, there is a decrease in contractile force. This leads to a decrease in cardiac output, which leads to pulmonary congestion, which leads to decreased tissue perfusion. So the heart is not working well enough, it's not pumping enough blood to meet the demands of the body. The risk factors for this, who's at risk? Of course, people who are having problems with their heart, things like a heart attack. So a myocardial infarction, those who have heart failure, cardiomyopathy, valvular stenosis, and then being elderly is another risk factor. The main causes of cardiogenic shock, that heart attack again, myocarditis, dysrhythmias, especially if you've had them for a long time, they're not being treated, endocarditis, pulmonary edema, and then structure issues, maybe like heart valve issues. And it's important to note that this is very, very serious, and most people who get cardiogenic shock will not survive. A patient experiencing cardiogenic shock is very acutely ill. So some signs and symptoms they might present with would be things like tachycardia. That one makes sense, right? Because the heart is working really hard because of that low cardiac output. Hypotension. Decreased level of consciousness, so they might be confused, they might be a little bit out of it, or they might be completely unconscious. Crackles will be heard in the lungs because of that backup, that pulmonary congestion in the lungs. So you'll hear of crackles upon auscultation. They'll have tachypnea, cool, clammy skin. Their peripheral pulses will be decreased, so hard to find peripheral pulses like a plus one, like thready, weak pulses. And that makes sense, right? Because that lack of blood flow to the tissues. Of course, they're gonna be freaking out, right? If they're conscious, they're gonna be very, very anxious and upset and worried. They're gonna have a hard time breathing, right? Um, they'll have decreased urinary output, and they might even report chest pain. Some important labs we wanna get on these patients, of course, cardiac enzymes, right? So cardiac enzymes, specifically your BNP, those are going to be elevated because those are showing stress and damage to the heart. Your ABGs are going to be reflective of an acidotic condition. So your patient is probably going to be in metabolic acidosis and show signs of hypoxia. They might want to do some of these other things too to kind of like rule out other um, causes. So they'll do a chest x-ray. Basically what a chest x-ray is gonna show us is what the heart looks like, the size and the shape of the heart. That's what we wanna see on a chest x-ray. An ECG, this is gonna help us determine if there's some sort of dysrhythmia going on that's causing it or part of it. An echo can show us if there's any evidence of valvular disease which could have caused this. And then cardiac catheterization is we're going to check for narrowed arteries. When it comes to our nursing interventions for these patients, lots of very thorough assessment, right? So these patients are very, very sick. So assessing their lung sounds, assessing their heart sounds, their vitals, keeping up on that stuff, their I and O, very, very important. They're gonna need oxygen, so administer oxygen as needed. They might even need to be intubated and ventilated. So of course, we're not gonna be the ones who do that. Um, but that might be a possible thing that could happen to these patients. We're going to give lots of medications, okay? Um, so first, IV inotropes. So these are going to increase cardiac output and myocardial contractility, because remember, that was the problem at first, right? That was causing all of these issues, as that was decreased. Um, since these medications are so serious, they require hemodynamic monitoring, and we have to be very careful the way we titrate these medications. Um, we can give IV fluids, but we need to do it with caution because they have that pulmonary congestion. We don't want to give them more fluid that they don't need that could make the problem worse. Um, morphine, that's going to help for pain control, and it's also going to help with them, you know, having a hard time breathing and being so anxious, right? Kind of calms down a little bit, calms the body down. Plavix to help prevent new clots from forming. 
Diuretics helps decrease preload by taking the extra fluid off so it takes the pressure off. Um, and dopamine can be used to increase the blood pressure. What we want to do, the reason we're doing all of these labs and all of these tests is we want to figure out what the cause is, right? Because different causes have different requirements for treatment. So treating the underlying cause is going to be key. So if we're thinking this is something like a heart attack, right, as our cause, we're going to do a lot of these sort of interventions to help treat that heart attack so that can decrease the patient's ability of going into cardiogenic shock. Um, and then other medications we might give, so nitroprusides decrease preload and afterload and therefore increase cardiac output. So that helps um, kind of decrease the workload on the heart. And these three I put on here, the nurse isn't going to do these things. These aren't nursing interventions, but these are other things that might be done. So they might end up getting an intra-aortic balloon pump inserted. They might have coronary artery bypass surgery. And then obviously, worst case scenario, they get a heart transplant. So we aren't going to be doing that, um, but these are possible treatments for this condition. Like I said in the beginning of the video, this is not something that most people will survive. So our goal really should be focused on preventing this in the first place. So finding patients who do have those risk factors and educating them about healthy diet, exercise, stop smoking, things like that. That would really be the nurse's overall goal before we even get to this point would be to prevent this from happening in the first place. And that was my video. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.